This training video is about learning to use the Oregon Wildfire Risk Explorer Basic Map Viewer. When you enter into the tool, um, this is the opening screen that you'll be seeing um, with the view of Oregon. And with this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the map viewer in terms of turning on and off data layers, how to generate a homeowner's report, and how to make a map. The Oregon Wildfire Risk Explorer is a partnership with the Oregon Department of Forestry and the U.S. Forest Service, where much of the data came from. Um, we also have other tools, and there is a training video on the Advanced Wildfire Risk Explorer um, that you might want to watch after this. So with the map viewer and all the map viewers on the Oregon Explorer, um, there is a home page, and this is the area on the left that tells you about the tool and in this case the tool is designed to give a comprehensive view of wildfire risk in Oregon and local fire history and it directly serves homeowners and communities. So let's start with the first task which is to learn about layers. So you'll see here this go to layers button. Um, at the bottom there's a home which is this home tab, um, or there's in grayed out layers as well here. So you can also get to layers that way. But we're going to go the easy route, hit go to layers, and you'll see that we have some active layers turned on. They're turned on when there's a check mark in the box. So what we're looking at right now is the hazard to potential structures. If you want to find out more about that data set, click on the I button, the information button, and it will tell you a description about this data set. So what's important to know about this statewide data set is that it assumes structures are present everywhere. We know that's not the case, um, but in looking at wildfire risk, if a structure is present, the risk is higher. And it's based on modeled vegetation, and you can see that it was produced by the United States Forest Service in 2018. So that's getting the information about the data layer. Um, you can also hit the X to get back to the layers, or again, this bottom, at the very bottom is a tab called layers. So if I wanted to turn the hazard to potential structures off, I just unclick it. And you'll see that we have a base map showing. We also have administrative boundaries, which are the county boundaries in this case. By opening up the base maps, we may not want to look at an aerial view, um, so we could turn that off. We may want to look at a topo map that shows the topography for the state. So it's pretty simple to turn on and off layers, and you can collapse and, and open up each of these folders just by clicking on the plus or the minus. So I mentioned about the hazard to potential structures. Um, you may also want to look at information like fire history. And so looking at the state fire locations, you can see the distribution of human caused and lightning caused fires in the state. Turning it off and on. Um, fire perimeters is another data layer that we have. And one of the things you can do is if there is a slider bar, it means that you can change the transparency. So you can start to look at two layers um, with one another. So the next thing I'm going to do is show you about the I want to button. So this is up here, the orange button that says I want to. And these are kind of quick ways to get to um, functions that are more common. And so I want to point out the help tours because they are actually available for uh, several of these functions. And so they'll step you through um, how to produce something. So in this case, we're going to do a homeowner's report and we're going to begin the tour with an address search. So it's telling me I can go to create the homeowner's report from here. Next search for an address, and I actually have an address that I want to create a report for. This is a property that is for sale, so I thought that was a good one to try out in Oak Ridge. 
Oregon. Uh, we're going to be done with, actually, we're going to hit continue. At this point, it has different locations. And so the first one is actually the correct one. Probably all of them are correct. Uh, and you'll see how the location has the base map information through with the, let's go back to the layers, hazard to potential structures. And I want to get the report for this location. And we're actually doing this dynamically at this point. So I haven't created it um, prior to doing this demonstration. Um, it tells me for that location right away in this dynamic summary um, that we are outside the urban growth boundary, that we are in the Hazeldale Rural Fire District, um, that there is a Lane County Community Wildfire Protection Plan that this location um, is covered by, that it is in the wildland urban interface with a hazard rating of high. That's just um, quick information. If I want to get to the actual homeowner's report, I click on homeowner's report and it's going to generate that report and it's going to download it. So you click on that. And here is the report that you can print off or view. And it has much of the same information that was in that dynamic summary. Um, so you can see about the wildland urban interface, the urban growth boundary, um, the structural fire protection district, and then it has more descriptive information about your wildfire risk. So in this area, the burn probability is moderate. Um, if there was a fire, you could expect pretty um, high flame lengths of greater than 11 feet. And even though the average hazard to potential structures is low, there are surrounding areas with high. And we will look at the map and see that. So you can see it's low in the surrounding areas or in the immediate area, but high in the surrounding areas. So that's pretty much how you create the homeowner's report. Just to review, uh, we went to I want to. I did the help tours, but you can actually go directly to create a homeowner's report. Um, a third way is to go to home and create the homeowner's report from here. So several ways to get to the same uh, task. We've shown you how to turn on and off layers. And the final thing that I want to show you is how to make a map. So if you want to make a map, um, first you have to, to turn on the layers that you want to show. And so maybe in this case, I don't want to show the base map. I think create a cleaner map with just the coverage of interest. Um, I might want to show in here the WUI boundaries, which are here. And I might be interested as well in if there are any Firewise community sites in the area. Um, I am not seeing any, but I will show you that later. And so with this, I am now going to uh, show you that you can get help with this. Print map is the help for that. And we're gonna do that as well. And so over here, we use the print map to make a map. You can customize your map so this is called the Thunder Ranch Wildfire Risk. You can put your name here. Um, important thing to know about is uh, you have some other options. You can print at a, a different page size. You can choose a different output format, um, a different scale. Um, important one that I use all the time is this lock print preview. Um, the print view is going to be in this square. And maybe I want to shift that around so I can get all of this camp six perhaps in there. So then I'm going to print. 
And again, it is preparing my file real time. And you can see how quick that was. And here is my nice formatted map. It has the legend with the uh, wooey boundaries and the hazard to potential structures. So if I wanted to share this map, I could show somebody um, that even though I am in a wooey high hazard area, that the, the land surrounding this particular point um, is actually low uh, hazard to potential structures. So getting out of that, um, I just want to review what we've done. Oops, sorry. Um, we have turned on and off layers by checking them on and off. Uh, let's look at that flame length, actually. And you can see that within this area that the highest flame lengths are um, greater than 11 feet. Uh, we've turned on fire history. We've looked at community groups of which there aren't any firewise sites. Um, uh, also, I wanted to make sure people know that some of these data layers are served outside. Um, this one's served from the NFPA. Um, and so sometimes if, uh, if you can't get a layer, it might be that the site externally is down. So don't get frustrated. Um, just try a different layer or coming back. And that pretty much concludes this demonstration. And look forward to you using the map. And much luck with um, creating your own map, creating your own homeowner's report, and being able to view the different data layers that are available through the Oregon Wildfire Risk Explorer Basic Map Viewer. Thank you.